Welcome back to Simple Truth. Uh, we are studying the story of David, uh, pulling out some simple truths from that story. We're in 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 21. David's running away from Saul. Right? He runs to uh, God. He runs to some priests, uh, and he's hungry. He's hungry. And imagine his state of mind. Hungry, tired, worn out, mentally gone. His heart is broken. All of these things, and he asks the priest, for some food, right? And the priest says, hey, I only got this hot bread, this holy consecrated uh, bread. And he, and he, David says, give me whatever you have, right? And they, there's some rules with that. We talked the last time about like, hey, are, are you paying attention to what you're asking God? Are you counting the cost, right? I want to pick it up in verse seven. It says this, now a certain man of servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Doug the Edomite, the chief of Saul's herdsmen. It's amazing how often the enemy is in the same place uh, that we are. You're going to say, well, duh, Andy. I want you to, I want you to listen to this, this concept and then you can argue with me or, or you can tell me what you think about it, right? But a lot of times in our irrational, in our our moments where we're down and we're out and we're just trying to figure out what what happens, right? The the enemy is sitting right there in our midst, overhearing everything, watching over th everything, listening to the words we say. Right? Sometimes he attacks right away. Sometimes he offers us a, a secondary out. Yeah, you don't really need God here. How about this way of paying off things? How about this relationship? You know, your heart's broken today over this one. Hey, how about this one right here, right now? Sometimes he tempts us right away in the moment. Sometimes he just gathers information. Why? Well, to use it for a different moment. Right? Like, what, what was the enemy going to do in this moment? Make him sick on some bread? Put, call out the lie? What was he going to do? But instead, the enemy, the enemy gets information. And what's he going to do with that information? Well, later we find out that he uses it, right? He uses it in a very big way. We got to be careful when we're crying out to God. You're like, Andy, why, why would we be, why would we have to be careful? Be careful who you're crying out to God with, where you're crying out to God, right? All of these different things. It matters. I wish everything was safe, but it's not. We have a very real enemy and he wants information all the time. He wants to know things. Why? Because he wants to use it against you. Right? In this moment, David's crying out for help and wait, an enemy, right? A servant of Saul. That's why we know it's an enemy. Just happens to be right there. This guy's going to run off, tell Saul some stuff going to tell, tell Saul what Saul needs to know. The enemy's got a bigger plan, a bigger picture. Like sometimes we're at work, something happens. Somebody overhears something. They very rarely come up to us and say, hey, you know, you know what you said there was wrong, right? Like, hey, you shouldn't be saying that about our boss. What are they going to do? They're going to go tell the boss. They're going to go tell another employee. They're going to go tell our spouse. They're going to tell our kids. They're going to tell our church people. I mean, people are that way. The enemy is just looking for channels. He's looking for people who would be conduits. You know that? how many times information that has been shared in a small group, in an intimate setting, in a, in a real way, gets used by the enemy because somebody sitting there is, can be used as a conduit. They take that information, immediately go to the pastor and say, hey, do you, you know that this person's doing this, right? You know that this person's thinking this. You know that this person's feeling this. So be careful be careful about crying out to the lord not not don't cry out to the lord be careful right be careful where you're crying out to the lord be careful with whom you're crying out to the lord it sounds weird it sounds goofy sounds like it shouldn't be a problem at church or anybody but do you know who's praying for you do you know who you're asking to pray for you do you know who you're sharing with? Do you know who you're opening up with? Do, do you know? Because somebody cannot be against you and still be used by the enemy against you. Not, not every single time is it somebody who just hates you 
No, sometimes it's people who like you. They love you. Like, listen, I was turned in to my parents a lot by my brother and sisters. I mean, they hated me, right? That just means they were used in that moment. So we need to be careful. Be careful where with who you cry out to the Lord. Think about that for a second. I bet you're going to find some examples and you could verify what I just said to you. But think about that. We'll see you next time here. Simple Truth.